Closing arguments are about to get underway in New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez's corruption trial after weeks of jurors seeing secret videos, gold bars, piles of cash, all examples of what prosecutors say were lucrative bribes the powerful senator exchanged for favors. Menendez is facing some of the most serious charges ever brought against a sitting senator. After deciding against testifying in his own defense, his fate could be in the hands of the jury as soon as Wednesday. Joining me now, former federal prosecutor and MSNBC legal analyst Glenn Kirshner and NBC's Rahema Ellis. So what's the latest we know from the courtroom? From the courtroom this morning, the defense put back on the stand their last witness. After that, uh, that ended just a short while ago. We now know that the jurors are having lunch. The expectation is they will come back in less than an hour from now and the prosecution will begin his closing arguments. On this case, as you point out, it's taken nearly seven weeks. Soon, these six men and six women will have a chance to decide who they believe in this case. This is a case with 18 charges against the New Jersey Senator uh, Bob Menendez. Those charges include bribery, extortion, obstruction of justice, and acting as a foreign agent. They allege that he acted as a foreign agent, accepting payoffs to help Egypt get more military aid and of using his position as that former powerful chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. For his part, he says that those 12 gold bars plus found in his home, that more than $450,000 that they found in his closet and clothes, even shoes, that this was all part of the, the culture of coming from Cuba. His sister testified that you will see this in many Cuban-American homes because they were afraid of Castro and that things could be taken from them in a moment's notice. She testified, interestingly enough, the senator did not. He, however, has maintained his innocence in this, as has his wife, who was also accused of bribery in this. And they say that she received a car as a part of the bribery, a Mercedes-Benz, but she's being tried separately because now she's undergoing treatment for breast cancer. All right, let's talk about those closing arguments, Glenn. Uh, we just got word that the prosecution says they expect closing arguments, their closing arguments, to take five hours. What are they going to talk about for that period of time, and what is their strongest argument? Yeah, that is a lengthy closing argument, Chris. I tried some RICO cases that lasted six months, one lasted three months, and I don't know that we pushed five hours, but we did go several hours in our closing and rebuttal arguments. So they're going to focus on the mountain of evidence that's been introduced against Senator Menendez over the course of the seven-week trial. And it may be true that in some cultures, people keep lots of cash and valuables around. Nothing wrong with that. The problem is, among other sharply incriminating evidence, one of the co-conspirators, a businessman who was paying these bribes, a gentleman named Joseph Uribe, um, provided some pretty damning evidence against both the senator and his wife, uh, who Rahima says is being tried separately, and I'd love to talk about that in a minute. Um, but, you know, there is some really compelling evidence when you find gold bars. You find hundreds of thousands of dollars hidden away throughout your own home, coupled with uh, much of the other testimony and evidence that was adduced. The prosecutors will have lots of evidentiary uh, ground to cover during closing arguments. Hopefully five hours, they don't overstay their welcome and lose the jury's interest. But there is a lot of evidence to cover. So what about the defense? And do you think it was right for Menendez not to testify? In the overwhelming majority of criminal cases, defendants do not take the stand. That's especially true in uh, federal prosecutions, a little less so in state prosecutions. Um, but I, I think uh, the best thing the defense has going for it is winning the legal ruling that the two cases would be tried separately, that Senator Menendez's wife, Nadine, would be severed out and her case will be tried later, because what that gives Senator Menendez the opportunity to do, and I've seen this and had to confront it many times as a career prosecutor, is to argue the empty chair defense. He will argue through his lawyers in their closing arguments, ladies and gentlemen, if anybody did anything wrong, it was my wife. He already sort of pulled that out over the course of the trial and even before the trial started, trying to blame any misconduct on his wife. So he'll argue, listen, I didn't really know what was going on with this money that was pouring in to our household. This is all a product of whatever my wife did. The problem becomes uh, once his wife is tried later on, 
I can see her and her attorneys arguing, wait a minute, wait a minute, I had nothing to do with it. This was all my husband's doing. So the empty chair defense is not always a winning defense, but that's probably the best angle that Menendez has going for him. And I suspect that's what they'll focus on in their closing arguments. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.